All right, guys, so this is the daily question video, and this one should be neurology and biochem. Uh, so let's see how you do. All right, guys, it says, which of the following is the most likely explanation for the patient's condition? And our answer choices are malingering, Broca's area lesion, cerebellar lesion, thiamine deficiency, or basal ganglia lesion. Okay, so kind of a neurology kind of aspect question. It says, a 61-year-old homeless man is brought to the emergency room after being found disoriented and confused in the community setting. Upon being clinically sober, the patient is, is having difficulty with short-term memory and forgetting questions being asked. He has what appears to be rhythmic shifting of his eyes back and forth. He is unsteady on his feet. He is well known to the hospital from multiple visits due to alcohol and has been known to seek shelter during inclement weather, stating he is suicidal, admittedly seeking uh, admission. Which of the following is the most likely explanation for the patient's condition? All right, so what do we know about this guy? Uh, he's disoriented, um, appears he's, he's been, you know, he's an alcoholic, and then when he's clinically sober, he's still confused, right? He's disoriented, he's confused, there's this rhythmically shifting his eyes back and forth, unsteady on his feet, um, but he's known to the hospital. Uh, for always saying, hey, like, you know, if it snows or bad weather, he's like, yeah, I'm suicidal, I want to be admitted, um, and such. So it's kind of a complicated case there. Because, you, you, you know, you, you always need to err in step one, step two, step three. You need to err on the side of treat the patient. So I'll tell you this, this whole answer and choice of malingering, uh, you better be a thousand percent sure you want to use that one. But I'd say on this test, I, I would stay away from that one for the most part. Um... I just don't see that one being a, a great choice to, to put on a lot of questions. You better be for sure before you go that route. So let's just let's just remove that one from the from our differential. Now, this guy has um, again confusion. Uh, he's got this this eye shifting, right? The uh, let's just call it oculomotor dysfunction. Let's give it a fancy name. Okay. And uh, he's, he's shaky on his feet. Kind of a motor ataxia. Okay. So, you know, and he's an alcoholic, you know, and, and what do we know about the alcoholic? What, you know, what, what are they, um, you know, what do we got to wor wor worry about? We got to worry about Wer Wernicke, uh, Korsakoff, right? And that, that Korsakoff, the, you know, the, 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 there's a triad, right? Confusion, um, uh, the, the gait disturbance, and the, the eye, eye rhythmic movements. Confusion, disorientation, confabulation, uh, oculomotor dysfunction, motor ataxia. So we worry about Wernicke Korsakoff. So the question, you know, with this one, I say we got to go in that direction. And what's the deficiency, or what's the most likely explanation? Now, they didn't give Wernicke Korsakoff on this, right? I mean, that would have been a pretty good one. You know, Broca's area lesion. Now, what is, you know, Broca? Broca we're gonna, is more of that motor aphasia, okay? That's that person who's, who's, who's unable to give the words, unable to produce the words, but in their mind, they're, they're, they're like, okay, I, I know what I want to say. I just can't, you know, I can't get it out. Um, in residency, uh, I saw a young lady who who had this, uh, and it was gosh, it was she she was struggling. I mean, she was struggling big time, and it's it's just sad to see. And it, it, part of it, there's a difference between knowing this, seeing this in a book versus seeing this in real life. Um, yeah, it, it it was pretty pretty uh, I don't know enlightening to actually see that. And that's why I always say, guys, if you have the opportunity to train in, in a hospital that's like a, you know, high volume, see a lot of patients, you, you want to see everything in residency. Uh, you don't want to get out and be, on, be in practice for the first time and see something uh, because you won't have that familiarity with it. That's why I would say train, train the, the place that's going to, uh, you know, allow you to see as many different cases. Um, and I always talk about my first time in residency, I, you know, my first patient on pediatrics was, they had Lambert Eaton. Uh, my first one in neurology had uh, Guillain-Barre. Um, and I remember seeing a, a Broca's area lesion as well. But anyways, Broca's area lesion, think motor aphasia. Uh, if you have a cerebellar lesion, there is an, in, you know, it, it does have the incoordination of movement, right? The ataxia. And they have, you know, difficulty with the rapidly alternating uh, movements. But I don't think it quite explains, this guy has, you know, pieces of that, but it doesn't do the best job explaining the entire picture. So I'll keep him in there, but it doesn't, I don't get too excited about him. I don't see the Broca's area lesion because the guy can, he can communicate. He just, uh, 
you know, it's 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 greater than that. You know, he's he's more con he's more confused than frustrated. Okay, uh, thiamine deficiency. Well, we always talk about you know the the with alcoholics. You know, there's there's a thiamine issue on that, and if you have a thiamine deficiency, it can potentially lead to you know over time. This guy's a chronic alcoholic, this Wernicke uh, Korsakoff. So I like him. Uh, basal ganglion lesion. Well, that's just more of the uh, movement. Uh, disorder, okay. And again, he has pieces of that, but in step one, they're gonna they're gonna bait you in on a lot of this stuff. He has a movement uh, unsteady on his feet, but he's got these other issues, rhythmic uh, shifting of his eyes back and forth, that cannot be explained by basal ganglion uh, lesion. So there's more to it. So then, when I'm down between cerebellar and thymin, this guy is an alcoholic. I think Wernicke Korsakoff. I got to be jumping all over thymin uh, thymin deficiency. Uh, and, you know, with this, there's, uh, well, I should go back to that cerebellar lesion too. You know, this guy's unsteady on his feet with the cerebellar lesion. Um, usually that's a wide, a wide based gait. Okay. And just some of the, 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 I don't want to say the classic gates, but if you have that propulsive gait, what is that one? Propulsive? You better be thinking, uh, Parkinson's. Okay. Head, neck, kind of bent forward a little bit. If you see a scissors gait. You know, kind of the thighs, knees rubbed together. Uh, you think cerebral palsy. Uh, let me see. Yeah, kind of a steppage gait. You know, kind of a steppage. That's going to be more of that uh, perineal, peroneal, perineal, how you want to say it. Kind of a muscle or nerve injury. And then the waddling gait. You better be thinking uh, muscular dystrophy. So there's just a just a couple. Proposal, pr propulsive gait, Parkinson's, scissors gait, cerebral palsy, steppage gait, perineal nerve, wilding gait, muscular dystrophy, uh, wide base gait, uh, cerebellar. And then again, back to this one, thiamine deficiency. Better be thinking Wernicke, Korsakoff, that triad. Now, in the comments below, can you tell me, uh, yeah, just do it like that. Can you tell me where the lesion would be? Okay, where's the lesion, Wernicke, Korsakoff, thiamine deficiency, where's the lesion in the brain? Go ahead and put it in the comments below and see if we can uh, get that one for you too. Okay, correct answer in this one's gonna be D. And this one says, a 32-year-old man presents to his primary care with bilateral arthritic knee pain, back pain, that has been ongoing for months. He has taken NSAIDs with little effect to alleviate the pain. On examination, his joints are not swollen and there, and there is no tenderness to palpation. You know, kind of, you know, rules out the kind of the gout-esque thing. He describes his pain as debilitating and restricting his ability to perform normal activities of daily living. The cartilage in his ears appears to be slightly darker than normal, a defect in which the following is most likely the cause of the patient's condition. So again, 32-year-old male, you know, he's at this debilitating, okay, debilitating joint pain. And what's the other kind of uh, path mnemonic or specific to something that we've, we've, we've discussed? The cartilage in his ears is darker than normal. So what are you thinking, okay? We're thinking alcoptonuria, okay, alcoptonuria. Um, and then, but then right now you should be going back and thinking, well, my answer choices are tyrosinase, biopterin, dihydrobopterin reductase, homogentistic acid oxidase, or GTP. And you should be familiar with all these terms based on our, on our uh, biochem. Phenylalanine, we start there, make goes to tyrosine, um, and he can keep going that path where he takes a right turn um, and he can go homogentisate or homogentisate acid and there's homogentisate deoxygenase. Um, but again, if you have a defect here, you get alcoptonuria. Um, so even on these answer choices, you're like, wait a second, I don't see, I, I don't see homogentisate deoxygenase. Okay, fine. Okay. Um, what's my best answer choice given what we got here? And you know, it's going to be homogentisate acid, okay? Uh, the tyrosinase, right? We always said tyrosinase. I think we said here it goes, makes melanin. Um, so if we have a def deficiency in the tyrosinase, uh, we're going to have uh, alban you know, you're gonna lead us to albinism potentially. Uh, the biopter, and remember that's PKU, uh, you know, kind of a, uh, but it's not necessarily the biopter is the issue with, with PKU. It's the dihydrobopterin reductase, which turns the BH2 back into BH4. Um, that's usually the, the, the PKU light, uh, per se. Um, and then GTP. Remember we said GTP, if we can get all the way to Krebs cycle, that step 
where uh, succinyl-CoA makes succinate gives the GTP, and then what do I what do I say that what do, what do we care about this for our purposes in this exam? Because we can use that GTP and go back up here to where we had to, uh, you know, there were some one way one way steps going down from glycol from uh, glycolysis, but in going back in the other direction, we need a GTP to get through phosphorylenol uh, pyruvate, and so we use it in that step right there, okay? So anyways, guys, the answer choice in this one, uh, D, homogentisic acid oxidase. Hope it was helpful. Mm -hmm.